Stars, Coach Borino with you. I have another fun video for you. Every time you purchase one of my systems, you come on board, you get the Expired Plus or the Fizborino or the Real Estate Video Plus, any of these programs. What you're going to get with the package is not just a bunch of books that come in the mail and an online access to all the resources, downloads and videos, but also an implementation session with me where you and I get together and we chat and I'll help you implement it, I'll help you put it together so you're up and running quickly. What you're going to watch is one of those sessions. Enjoy! Option, but uh, Saturday yeah. is when I would do most of my, um, uh, my prospecting. Well, first of all, let me tell you, kudos for actually doing it. You know, so many people just get the system and not do much with it. So you actually being out there trying it, using it is good. That's a really good start. I like that a lot. Um, okay. The second thing I can give you is do the best you can with what you have. If the time right. available is the time you have, then that's the time you have. Fill it up, be as productive as you can be. Okay. So the idea is this, and that's what the Fisborino system is all about. You reach out first via email, text, phone call, or you stop by the for sale by owner. The okay. goal, the first objective is to meet with the seller, check out the property, qualify them to see if you can help them, if you want to help them, if you want to work with them. That's the first right. order of business. So you can do this from anywhere, anytime. These emails can go out anytime. You're not restricted at all. So if you go right. on Craigslist, you pull them up, you fill out that form, contact them using the Fisborino. You know, would like to stop by. If I had a buyer, would you work with an agent? That's the gist of the message. Right. I'm doing primarily RedX, just to let you know. Okay, I, cool. I really like RedX. They got a lot of. Um, you know, usually have this phone. There's a there's a phone number with it. That's the best thing. But yeah. I've been using Zillow as well. Good. I mean, use Zillow, and I would also use Craigslist because the more right. channels you have, Stephen, the better. The okay. more Obviously, it increases it. Okay. Yeah, and increases your chances because once you have the system down and you're clearly working on it, so it's just a matter of time to perfect it and just become a real rock star with it. It's not that complicated. But once right. you get it down, the more contacts you make, the more people you reach, the better chance you have to turn more of them into listings. It's just a pure statistics. Sure. No, I, I, you know I, mean? I get that it's a numbers game, and, and yeah. that's that's exactly what uh, what my other my broker had told me. So I, mm -hmm. I'm. That makes a lot of sense to me. W yeah. One question I have, Barino, is I've been looking, you know, at the um, follow-up strategy, and I like yeah. I like your showcase guide because I was making one on my own before I got the course, and this is much better. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. What would you say are the top five follow-up strategies that seem to work best? I, I know they're all good, and of course, the thank you is is the thank you card is the number one. Yeah. But other than the thank you card, what if you had to pick five? What would be the best one? The best FISBO follow-up strategies. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here's what I would recommend. First, take a general look on follow-up. You want to provide information that's cool, that's helpful, that's interesting. Because what do most agents right. send? You know, me, 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 my company, we have buyers, blah, blah, blah. Noise, marketing, promotion, yeah. nobody really cares. So you want to stand out. So out of that entire sequence, first of all, a thank you card, the handwritten thank you card. Anything that's personal, anything that doesn't smell of marketing or advertising works really well. So handwritten thank you card first. After that initial meeting with the FISBO, just a short little note, hey, it was a pleasure meeting you. Hopefully I can send a good buyer your way and things will work out. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. Always end with that offer. I'm here to help. Don't, don't f hesitate to ask for questions. I want to be your resource. That's the positioning. Okay. So you start with a thank you card. The second thing I would do is a market update. And you can either send That's it as a one, one package, you know, active listings, pending, sold, or you can split it up. Hey, here's your competition. These are homes being offered for sale right now. And then a few days later, you can follow up. This is, these are the recent sales. So you okay. can split it if you want to and offer just an overview. Don't overthink this. It doesn't need to be super detailed or super elaborate. And by no means, this should be a CMA. That's just what's right. going on in our neighborhood. And that would be actually a little note I would write on it to make it very personal to that for sale by owner. The next piece I, was off, I would offer is tailored based on the situation. So let me give you an example. Let's say there's a FISBO who has a big sign in the front yard with their cell number, which most sellers do. So I would say, John, it's not very safe to promote your cell number publicly like that because you never know whether the people calling you are coming are really genuinely right. interested in your house or something else. So you don't want to fear monger, but you want to offer that alternative view that not everybody is as honest, is an honest buyer interested in the property. So I would offer, right. why don't I help you set up a Google Voice? It's free, it's going to route the numbers, you can still get the phone calls, but this way you're protected and your privacy is protected. 
So now you have yeah, a follow-up piece. I yeah, go ahead, please. No, no, so that was one of the other ones I had, I had picked out. So far, we're on the same page. So. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I mean, yeah, look at it just from a human perspective. What would you be yeah. interested in? What would resonate with you? What would be right. helpful to you? That's what you want to offer to your sellers as well. So that'd be another okay. thing I would offer. I would ask them, hey, do you guys do open houses? Would you like to borrow my signs? I can lend you a few signs, so this weekend, if you're going to do an open house, why don't you use them? You're welcome to use them. That'd be nothing. Again, something of value to them. Here is why, especially the open house sign strategy is pretty good. It forces the for sale by owner to meet with you in person twice. Because that's the only way they're going to get the signs. Either you're going to drop them off at their house, or they're going to come to your office to pick them up. Okay. So now you have another chance for interaction, for answering questions, for building relationship and developing connection with them. Now, later, once you have a good relationship and report built with the seller, I would even offer to do an open house for them if the house qualifies, if you would make a good open house, okay? So that's another one. There is a whole library. Pick and choose what you feel is appropriate for the particular seller. That's why there is not a locked-in sequence because sometimes certain things don't make sense. The open house, for example, if it's like a gated community or a condo, would not make sense. You're going to skip that. But just go one right. by one. The next thing I'm going to give you, which again, a lot of agents screw up, don't overthink it. Don't overthink any of this. Most of the advice you're going to give them, do this, repair that, do that, do this marketing strategy, do the video, all that. They're never going to do that. They, would, they are too busy, too incompetent, too uh, preoccupied. They go visible because they think, I'm going to stick a sign in the front yard, put an ad on Zillow or Craigslist, and it's going to sell. That's their idea. Our house is special, it's beautiful, it's going to sell. Reality is, if you check the stats, that seldom happens, hardly ever. So chances are, the odds are in your favor. So even if you offer these things where you tell them you must do a good flyer, you must have a guest register, you must follow up with potential buyers, they take it as a good advice, they're not going to do it. You know, so right. don't worry about it too much. On the contrary, it will make you look very competent, busy, and it justifies the commission you charge because it is a lot of work to get a listing sold. It requires right. marketing and strategy. Make sense? Oh, that does. That does. I, I look at it like with, with treating patients and try to give them advice that's going to yeah. help them. And lots of times we don't get paid for our services. So I'm, I'm used to doing things like that. It's uh, just goodwill. Versus yeah, exactly. Just marketing. Because really throughout okay. the follow-up, you're establishing connection. You're positioning yourself as the expert, as somebody who is helpful. Not just an agent okay. chasing a listing. Yes. If the time is right and they're ready for it, of course you want a listing. Of course you want to help well, them. You know. Well, one one problem I have, uh, Barino, is is me. It's, this is on me. Is that even though I've been a, a realtor on and off for four years, I don't have too much experience. I do have a couple of closings, mm. but it's not, I can't say. Well, I sold twenty houses last year or forty houses, and I feel it's on me that I feel that I'm. Uh, you know, I don't have that confidence. And I did sign up for the for the. Uh, for the role play session tomorrow. Oh, good Saturday. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Saturday. Yeah. But uh, but what else could I do to make myself believe that I know what I'm doing, even though mm -hmm. I do know what I'm doing, but I just don't have enough experience. Yes, a really good question. When you started as a chiropractor, mm -hmm. was it hard to get new patients because you were new? Yes, and and um, the hardest thing was I wanted to make sure I didn't hurt the patient. Sure. You know, I wanted to make sure that what I did was correct and not miss anything. Yeah. Well, there are really two parts to it. One, you have to have confidence in yourself. You have to trust yourself right. as an agent, as an expert, that once they do come to you and say, we need your help, you're competent enough to know what to do. That's the first part. Okay. And that's the most important part. Because if you don't trust yourself, there is no way you're going to convince somebody else they trust you. You know what I mean? That's true. That's impossible. That's you can kind of shenanigan your way into it by some sleazy scripts and some, some pushy salesmanship, but that's only no, going to get you so no. far. You know? And especially now the consumers are well-educated. They know what's going on. They can see through it. You can. Everybody can. Well, I mean, yeah, they can Google my name and they'll see, oh, you're a chiropractor. Yeah. Oh, you're a broker. What are you? You know, and that, that, yeah. that's the thing. I think it's on me that I have to decide when I, when I meet with these people, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an agent. Yes. I'm not a... So first and foremost, you've got to develop a level of confidence where you trust yourself. Where you may okay. say, I haven't been at this for 20 years, but let me give you an alternative perspective, Stephen. There are agents who have been at this for 20 years and are still incompetent and are still struggling and are still broke. Years right. in the business is only one of many indicators, not the indicator. Otherwise, how would all these new agents become rock stars so fast? So just think about sure. it this way. Years in the business, 
Does it help? Sometimes, but not always. And it's no guarantee that if an agent has been at it for 20 years, he or she will do a great job for this particular seller. Those two are not related at all. Now, how do you develop that confidence first in you that you know what you're doing and you're competent? Divide into a few parts. And this is the part where you're going to watch it on video. It will make more sense because I'm going to draw something on the whiteboard. But it's like a pie. So the first pie is market. You've got to know your market inside out. That means you know right. what's going, what's, what's, what's selling, type of homes. Like you said, three bedroom, two bath, most of my homes. You need to know the age. You need to know why certain homes sell for 15, 20, 30,000 more, even though on paper they look very similar. So understanding the market, that's one of the core competencies. You know what I mean? So it doesn't take long to get there. Study the market. Go preview property as, as often as you can, as many as you can. That's what helped me. I would study the market diligently, go out there, see what's, what's for sale, what's been sold, what's pending, all that. So knowing the market yeah, is Yeah, I've been going to a lot of open houses. Good, uh, good. Just to see what's out there. Exactly. So that's the first part. The second part is the marketing competency. That means once you sign up somebody, you know what to do. You know how to get a listing sold. And there are only really about 10 important things you need to get done. One of them is pricing. You do a huge disservice to sellers if you overprice your listing. That's a no-no. That hurts everybody. Nobody wins in a situation like that. So, but that goes back to the market competence. So marketing, know the steps. How to prepare the house for showing, how to input in MLS, good pictures, all that stuff that it takes to get a property sold. Next competency is your communication. How you communicate, how you present, how you come across. Because here's the thing. Deep inside, you may be confident, you may be poised, you may well know the market and be an expert. But it's not who you are, it's how you're perceived. Because even if you're perceived, even if you're just perceived as nervous or insecure, you may not be those things. It comes down to your confident communication to get the point across. And it's a balance between being confident but not arrogant and being competent and strong and not weak. So you have to be right in the middle. And that's where the com communication comes in so important. There, you practice. That's what helped me. I would practice daily. How I sound on the phone. That's why we're going to have that role play on Saturday. If you do yeah, I'm these, glad you have that. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you're going to join us. It's going to be good. And it's going to be practical. Little theory, but a lot of actually doing it. Where either whether you role play or you hear somebody else role play, you can pick out. That worked. That was good. Ooh, that didn't sound right. Or that sounded like <laughs> nervous or insecure. I would hang up or whatever. Okay? So right. communication. Okay. The next part is the technical stuff. And that includes stuff like knowing paperwork, knowing the mechanics, knowing how to use the MLS, you know, the, the, the stuff that you have to do daily as a real estate agent. Okay? Right. And I have somebody to help me with that too, so it's not like I'm on my own, so it's good. Good. And the last and the biggest chunk is actually your, your, your mind. Because this, and first and foremost, is a mind game. And that goes beyond just real estate. That goes in the overall, your personality, your beliefs, your expectations, your focus, who you believe you are. Your self-worth, what do you believe about success, about money, about wealth, about real estate, about clients and all that. Now, you coming from a medical field, this will be fairly easy because it's your nature to help people, to connect with people, to make them feel better. And in exactly. many, many ways, real estate and chiropractic and any medicine really are very similar in these ways. Where you take on a client, you first diagnose, diagnose the problem, establish trust and rapport with them so they can be honest with you. And then you find a solution and you walk them through the solution. Now, many times the solution can be a little painful, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> true. You know, I looked at it the same way that you identify the problem, you amplify it a little bit because yes. that's where the marketing is. Yes. And then you become this, let them come to the realization that you're the solution. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And it's a symbiosis between your expertise and your skill and your tools that you have available and their mm -hmm. need, their desire. And those are only two things that drive them. Either they have a serious problem, the house is really small, or the neighborhood is going down to shit, or whatever. Or they have right. a huge desire to live somewhere else. They want a house on a golf course. They want an ocean view. They want to be close to the family. These are the forces that you first identify, then influence, and then solve the problem for them. Because if they don't have a problem, okay. your solution doesn't matter. Like, I would right. not go to a chiropractor if I feel 100% fine. You know, if I feel vibrant and healthy yeah. and strong. Uh, I would not need a solution because I didn't have a problem. So it's the same thing here. 
figure out what the problem okay. is. And it goes back to being good in communication, being able right. to communicate with strangers in a way that they feel comfortable, they can trust you, they open up to you. And sometimes that's just a matter of very short time. It doesn't take a long time to open up. Make sense? Okay. Yes. It so does. this is it's where done. your your sense of competency will come from. Now, some of it will only come from experience. There is a portion that cannot be replaced by anything but experience. But that's not okay. something you can do about right now anyway. So I wouldn't worry about it. Now, will there be clients who will absolutely not list with you because you've been in the business for four years? Possibly. And because you don't have a huge track record? Possibly. Some of it you will salvage through being confident and being a good communicator. Some of it, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Because right. That's what we, I figured. There's nothing I can do about nothing. it. I'm not going to lie about it. Just move no. on. And... No, but you can do and say certain things that help the client get a certain perspective. And here are some of the things I would say. Let's say we're in a conversation and you question my track record. I'd be the first one to admit it. Hey, I just want to let you know, I don't have a huge track record. There are agents who sell 10 times as many homes in this neighborhood than I do. I do what's called a preemptive strike. In other words, if I bring it up, suddenly it's not their objection. Suddenly it's a discussion where I'm completely honest with them and completely open. You know what I mean? So if I feel that's going to come up or it has come up, I would totally address it right. first. And then I would say, unfortunately, just because Jim or Sue sold a home down the street has no meaning for you because there is no guarantee they can do the same for you. Can they? Maybe, but maybe not. You don't know. What it really comes right. down to is how much do we trust each other and how much do you believe I can get the job done? Because if we trust well, each other, if you believe I'm the most competent agent who will take care of you, someone you trust, then the rest doesn't matter. And if we don't trust each other, the rest doesn't matter anyway. Well, that's exactly what happened with the one with the one closing I'm doing right now. It was mm -hmm. actually a patient through, through an insurance exam. Oh, who interesting. Started, I had my, uh, my, my real estate license, and then he said he's looking for a home, and I uh -huh. sent him to a lender. I said, get pre-approved first. And I didn't want to be a you know, a buyer's agent, and then he yeah. came back and said, can you help us? I said, of course. And, uh, you know, even though I don't want to be a buyer's agent, I want to be the best buyer's agent for these people right now and sure. help them. So, yeah. And that's a, that's a good move. Trust. I mean, it's all about trust. And sometimes you use yeah. these experiences to learn how to develop trust and communicate and guide these people and be the go-to person, the advisor. The, the, okay, the, well, that, the that, makes, that makes a lot of Does sense. It make that's sense? the way I'm trying to approach it, yeah. not like hard sell, but more like, hey, I'm here to help you. And if I get sure. the listing, that's great. And if I don't, um, what, one thing, Barino, I do have a, a, a one big question. Um, Before you go to it, Steve, hold on to that question. Hang on just oh. a second. Let me just give you a couple of things that will really help you. Please remember the question, okay? Yeah, no, no problem. Two things I'm going to give you. One, okay. if somebody chooses not to work with you and you realize that at that point there is nothing you can do and you walk away, think about this. Sometimes they don't want to work with you because of your age, your race, your height, your waist, <laughs> your right. to this or to that, and you cannot solve it. So the solution to that is you have enough of these lined up. So if one doesn't work out, absolutely no big deal. You're not attached. Right. You know what I mean? So line them up in a huge mass volumes. That's why it's so good that you prospect and you're out there chasing these people. Because some you will not click with and some you will turn down. Where you say, right. yeah, don't want to work with this. <laughs> has, has that happened to you? And that's cool. Yeah. Because knowing who you don't want to work with is just as important as being clear who I want to work with. Okay. So do it in high volume and just really don't be attached. Because the non-attachment creates attraction. What I mean is, if they feel they're right. being chased by an agent, suddenly they become the price and they get defensive. And many times they put up the wall that you have to break through and that's often very hard. But if you're, uh, it's a very equal relationship. If they need to qualify to you just as much, if it's very mutual, the dynamic changes. Mm -hmm. And that, that has more to do with the mind and the attitude than anything else. Yeah? Okay. Helpful? I, I like that. I like Good. that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to Good. me. <laughs> now, let's go to your question. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, no, 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 no. I, thank you. It's wisdom. I, I just wrote that down. Um, my, my question pretty much is tracking. I know um, mm -hmm. I had real Pete Juggler before. You know, I was born in 1963. I know how to use computers, but uh -huh. I just, the CRM seems like double work. Yes. Um, like even when I schedule, I have patients, I have other offices. I use, I use a book uh -huh. and that seems to work for me. So what I just try to make up was a, a list of names every week from the Red X or wherever mm -hmm. I get it from. And then I make columns 
like one through fifteen or okay. whatever. And like I'll know like number one is the thank you card, number two is the market update, you mm-hmm. know, I'll, I'll have a code and then I'll just check it off. So I know that when I called Mary Smith, um, I did this, this and this, mm-hmm. you know, and I have the date on it. Is it that's the way I seem to do it. it, it does that work or am I doing am I overworking it? I'm trying to make sure that I don't miss when I do the follow ups. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't miss that's a really good question. It's better than nothing. <laughs> Many agents okay. struggle with follow-up. They don't even have this. I'll give you a few things. One, hire somebody to help you as soon as possible. Just like in a medical office, you have nurses, you have staff, you have administrators who take care of the, the things that need to be done, just not by the doctor. Same thing right. with real estate. You cannot run this by yourself for a long time, especially not in a higher volume. That's impossible. Because then you have I, to cut. I know that. You know, so, but that, get, the sooner you get help, the sooner you're going to make more money. That's it's a direct okay, relationship. Okay, so that's that's what I'm. I have I have yeah. a VA helping me um, just on this one closing, but I'm going to mm-hmm. have her do some of this. Then okay, that, do it, that do it. Sense. Hire somebody, even for like two hours a day. Just take care of the paperwork, yeah. the admin stuff, the things that slows you down. Like sitting and fucking around on the computer. Sometimes, yeah, it has to be done. Just not by you. That's not a good investment of your time. You know, your right. money is in talking to for sale by owners, previewing property, following up, presenting, doing listing presentations, studying the market negotiating right. contracts, that's where the dollars are. So that's the first thing I'm going to give you. The second thing, you should automate that. So hopping on a system, and there are plenty of good systems out there. Realty Juggler is a good one. I really like Lion Desk. It's affordable. It has all kinds of cool tools and features you can use. Learn the basics. You need to master the basics, and all of these have good video tutorials. They have good support, so you can get it up and running quickly. Right. And then you're going to hand it off to your staff. Because majority okay, of your follow-up will be done by your staff automatically. The only part you're going to take over is the phone calls, the communication. Okay. Okay? And then automate okay. it. I like that. Automate yeah, it so, okay, so the, the mail goes out, the, the calls are sequenced. The rule of thumb with FISBOS is you need to be in touch every seven to ten days. So right. at once a week, they hear from you. They get a call. They get a text. Hey, new listing, 1234 Oak Street. Call me for more details. Need to talk to you. Little but Perino, like you that. don't you don't think that that's too far apart, considering that their their uh, what do you call it their um, uh, lifespan as a FISBO is usually like sixty days, and it depends mm-hmm. on what cycle I catch them in. Yes, should it be a little? Should it be that a little would be more, a minimum. You can do more. I mean, think about it this way, Stephen. If you're sending them and talking to them and texting them interesting, helpful information, you can't overdo right. it. You know what I mean? Okay. That's my kids. They love candy. I can't overdo it. I can feed them one by one every five seconds, and they'll be just chowing down, chowing down, chowing down, of because course. they like that shit. It's the same thing sure. with a good follower with FISBOS. The moment you switch into marketing is when they resent, and you overdo it, and they get pissed off. But as long as right. I'm feeding you good info and good, helpful stuff, you can't overdo it. So you're right, especially if you do things like multi-steps, like if you lend them your open house signs. You can prep them. Here's the guest register. Here are the signs. I'll come and get them. We'll talk. Maybe I'll help you follow up with these folks. You know, so now right. it becomes a multi-step follow-up, and those work really, really well. And you're right. Within 30 days, pretty much every single FISBO realizes it's a bad idea. It's not happening. Time for Plan B. But yeah, if I've you seen that on, on Zillow and even on Red X when I oh make yeah. that calls. They're already listed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Which is both good news and bad it. news. Bad news, you lost some business. But good news, you know, if you're feeding the pipeline with the new ones, Sooner or yeah. later, somebody's going to list it. Why not you? Okay. Makes sense? Well, that's, yeah, no, that, 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 this all makes sense. And, and one other question I do have. I don't sure. have a real strong VIP directory. And I think that's an awesome thing to give them. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you recommend? I mean, I can get things like from Home Advisor or something, but I haven't used them. So what, what would you recommend? The, the VIP directory only works, and for, for those of you guys watching this video, when I'm talking to Stephen, you're going to be watching this. Uh, it's a directory of services that you offer to the seller, like handyman, roofers, cleanings, company attack. Skip it. Right. I would not Skip offer it, it okay. unless you have somebody you can vouch for. Because okay. I can tell That's, you I how your, sure. your reputation would go to shit if somebody screws up or they overcharge them or don't do a good job. You recommend it somebody you've never used with, you don't have trust with. So for now, I would okay. skip that. You know? And start building the relationship because you're going to need these people. You're going to need a good roofer, a good plumber, a good real estate attorney. You're going to need a good landscaper. 
you have yeah. to start building the team of support around you of people. Who well, I do. I have, I do have a few people, but I, I was looking at your list and I'm like, wow, I'm missing a lot of people on that list. So I think now, the thing is to go out there and just start getting those relationships. Start getting into relationships. And the best way to do that is recommendations. Talk to people who use somebody. Who do you use? Who do you like? Who does a good job? That was a big chunk how I did it. I would talk to other agents, busy agents. You want to talk to busy agents. Agents who do right. a lot of business. Hey, if you need a new roof, who do you normally call? Who, who can help? If you need a good handyman or painting or carpet cleaning, and right. then talk to these people, and they'll be happy to talk to you. They'll take you to lunch, you get to know them, use them maybe, and then you can decide, I'm going to use that person. Yeah? Okay. But for now, just skip it. I would skip it for now until you have, and it doesn't need to be huge, Stephen. Don't overthink it. It doesn't need to be okay. everybody. Like my list was extensive because so many years in real estate. You'll get there. You'll build it slowly, but it doesn't need to be super extensive. Yeah? Okay. That's a really no, good That question. makes a lot of sense, Karina. Thank you. Good, 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 good. What else? Uh, I guess um, the only thing I can think of is, with, is, is oh, okay. One, one question I do have. I've been looking at a lot of your videos, and uh -huh. you had the one where you make the initial call, and um, pretty much, and I mean, I do have the, the Fisberino course, but... Um, yeah. I like where you're just calling on, on the FISBO and just asking about it just to come by and take a look at it that you don't have a buyer, but right. you wanted to see if, if you, you know, any of your buyers, you know, if it would qualify for anybody when you do have a buyer. So that's, I'm kind of like, I don't have a buyer um, for this one particular property. So what would you recommend I say when I make the initial call? Excellent question. Let me ask you a question first though. If the property was really beautiful and priced really well, it was a really good deal, would you have at least one person you would call and say, you know what, I saw this house, you should come check it out. It is awesome. Would you have at least Probably. one? Probably, yeah, sure. That's all you need. Okay. That's all you need. You don't pretend. Here's the thing. You never mislead the FISBO saying, I have a buyer. You don't know whether you have a buyer. Buyer becomes a buyer when they walk into the property and say, where do we sign? We want to buy it. That's a buyer. Everything right. before that is just a prospect. Right. And you explain okay. to the FISBOs, do I have people who would potentially buy a nice home for a good price? Of course I do. I don't know if I have a nice home yet. I don't know if I have the nice seller I can trust. So let's get that out of the right, way You first. want to qualify the house and the buyer, or the seller. Exactly. Before. Exactly. Okay. That's the whole idea. So you tell them, let's, let's get together for five, ten minutes. Give me a quick tour. I'll take a look. We'll shake hands, talk for a couple of minutes. And I will see if I have somebody. What would you prefer? Do, do you want me to send them your way or would you rather I bring them by? You know, right. so you're not misleading them. That's not the point. But you cannot ever say you have a buyer until you have a buyer. And you don't have a buyer until they buy that house, until they're ready to sign. Right. You know? And so. then the initial thing, the initial visit is the most important because you can't Correct. do the follow-ups without that, obviously. Correct. So you want to meet them in person, but you're honest with them. Yeah, I do I work with buyers? Yeah. Of course. And that's a value. And I know, Mr. Seller, you're getting hit by all these agents who don't want anything else other than listing. And even if they tell you they have a buyer, you suspect that they're lying to you. Where here's the reality. Right. I might have somebody, I really don't know, but let's meet first, let's take it one step at a time, I'll take a look at the property, and then the people I do have, I will let them know whether they will be willing to come and see it, I can't control, obviously. But I'll send them your way if they're interested. I, I find that most people, or most FISBOs are willing to let you see sure. the property because sure. even though they, they don't trust you, they still know that you do possibly might have a buyer and they're always right. willing to do that. Exactly. Especially if it's exactly. five minutes. We're not talking about, you know, doing a listing presentation. Just exactly. Just going there, meet and greet, and, and that, that will establish the initial contact so then we can follow up. And Yes. Okay. That's what I wanted to make and that's sure. Really, I, I just want to make sure. To that's really the whole it. secret is you set the time constraint so they, they don't have to worry that you're going to waste half an hour, an hour of their time trying to convince them, trying to sell them or anything, trying to insult them with some silly scripts. So, yeah, that's okay. perfect. You're doing it well. And, and, you're doing it well. Well, thank you. I, I just wanted to see, am I being realistic or trying to get one listing a month? I mean, with the limited time that I have, if I can set up my, my phone calls on Thursdays and Fridays and, and try to, you know, make my appointments on pretty much Friday mornings and Saturday and Sundays. It is possible. That, Will it require a lot okay. of hustle? Yeah. You're going to work super early in the morning. You're going to work late at night and you're going to work, work weekends. But the numbers... And again, your numbers vary. There's no guarantees or promises. My lawyer always makes me say that. But well, here are the numbers. Out of four for sale by owners you put on the system, that means you've met with them, you have some relationship with them, you think they're motivated and qualified to sell. Out of four you have on the follow-up that you maintain connection with, one minimum one should be a listing. 
That's how okay. you should look at 25%. it. Now, if you don't do 25%, something is broken. Somewhere in the system, something is broken. But Either the initial contact. So I just want to make sure. Yeah, I just want to make sure these are the people that maintain contact with the follow-ups. Yes, correct. So let's say you meet with 10 for sale by owners, and out of those 10, half will get discarded where you absolutely don't want the listing or the seller is unrealistic or it's very obvious that they're, they're, they're not ready to sell. If they have all the time in the world, no core driving emotion. So let's say you end up with half, five. You okay. follow up with those five, that should be one and two listings minimum. That would be my expectations. And that's what I expect okay. from, from you guys, my students who use it. Now, some do more. Okay, I just wanted to make so. sure that I'm, I'm, uh, that's what I should be shooting for and not over... You know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, not have super high expectations, but at least realistic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That is realistic. It's possible. It's possible. You have to be organized. You have to be disciplined when it comes to your time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I, I don't want to mislead you. I don't want to mislead you saying it's going to be easy. It is a lot no, of work and it will require hustle, but it's doable. It's totally doable. It's possible. I mean, I was part-time right. agent. Well, you know, I was working in real estate. Mm -hmm. I was a bartender. I drove a van at night. I did all kinds of crazy things before I became full time. Right. So you got to do what you got to do, but right. don't and wait I, too and long. That's the time constraint. I just have to deal with the time yeah. I have. There's there's no way around it right now. My recommendation would be set a hard deadline by which you're going to become a full time agent, and don't deviate that's, that's from a, it. Don't compromise. That's, that's exactly what I did. I, oh, I, good. I put down for next next year in March to give me uh, a little bit more than a year. Outstanding. That's outstanding. I think that's too long. I think that's too oh, far off. Okay. I would go for maybe three, maybe six months at the most, at the most. I'm sorry, three to... I didn't three to six months. No more than six three months. Three to six months. Okay. Mm -hmm. Full time. That, that, that's what I would do. Set a really hard, okay. tight deadline that will motivate you, that will force you to put the systems in place and really go for it big time. Hard I deadline, put it on your calendar and just gun for it. You know, give it what will. you got. Hustle. <laughs> All right. Hey, it was good chatting with you. I enjoyed this. We're going to send you the recording. You can see the video. And Keep me posted. Thank you so okay. much, Karina. I, I really, yes, I will. I really appreciate it. You, um, you're like that missing piece that I needed, and, oh, and I you. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it, Stephen. Keep me posted. Ask uh, questions. Email me, and let me know how things are. Okay. I, I definitely will. I'll let uh, you know when I get my first listing. Awesome. Please do. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Nice talking okay, with you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Karina. Yeah. Take care.